SEO in a nutshell is so it's short for search engine optimization. <laughs> SEO. Yep, that's us. We just hey. started. Awesome. But sign in. Is it right? Is he? Yeah, it's fine. So search engine optimization, and it's the process of getting our traffic from the free or organic or editorial or natural search results on a search engine, right? Typically it's a Google Google search, right? Yeah. But it theoretically could be a Yahoo or Bing, but for our purposes tonight, we are talking Google because Google owns like 65% of the search. Uh, so we're, we're talking mostly Google. Bing is up, getting up there. So, But what is it really? Is it art, science, or magic? <laughs> so optimizing pages and content to show up in a search result. Some say it's manipulating the search engines, like black hat techniques, as they call it. It seems Google doesn't want people to know and understand SEO because AdWords, right? They'd rather sell you advertising than you know this stuff. So Google's education is terrible on this stuff. So, but SEO tries to answer the question, what are people searching for? <laughs> but, so here's some basic concepts you need to understand. So search engines look for relevancy, right? So, but, and, in other words, does your site serve up information quickly? That's a really important concept to understand. I'll leave it here as you guys scratch that out. <laughs> so, yeah. And all major search engines, main, main three, big three being Google, Bing, and Yahoo, have primary search results where web pages and other content, such as videos or local listings, are shown and ranked and based on what the search engine considers most relevant. Kind of goes back to that slide. So, in other words, what elements do people find more attractive enough to click on? Right. This is accomplished with images, video, web copy, and things like meta descriptions or on-page descriptions, which I'll be talking about later. So, having a search engine-friendly website, a site with no barriers to search engines, is critical to success for within the organic search results. This is why you want your site to be indexed by the search engines, Google in particular. Re-indexing a site needs to happen whenever new content is added. And most people don't do this, and you do it all through Google Search Console. So one of the things you want to learn is how to do set up Google Analytics and Google Search Console on a website if you ever do websites. Or you can hire an SEO guy like me to do it for you. <laughs> Sometimes. So here's a really important graphic. So 50% of the clicks are in the top two Google positions, and then it drops off dramatically. So rank one has a 36.4% click-through rate. Rank two is a 12.5. Rank three is 9.5, 7.9, 6.1, right? So it just drops off the face of the planet. So 50% so are just in the top two, 36 plus 12, right? So if you're not on the first page of Google, you're destined for oblivion. No one is going to see your website. So that's why all this is so important. It, it, it's the attractiveness and the relevancy that, that makes for that? Is, yeah, is, part of it. Is there any specific, like, is it is it copy or is it... You'll see. You know, that's coming up. Okay. <laughs> that's what this class is about. <laughs> so, uh, this is my content. This is I made up this SEO is marketing 2.0. This is where it's gone. So... If it's done right, it's free advertising, right? If you do SEO right, you're not paying for AdWords. It's literally free advertising. And also, you need to think of your website as a digital ad asset, not a digital brochure, right, or, an, or an advertisement. Websites can be put to work for you, but SEO is work, which is time, and if you have the time, you can do it yourself, right? But you know, have the knowledge and have the time to do it. So this is so you don't need to write all this down, but this is a preview of everything I'm going to be talking about. <laughs> so these are the rank proven factors that work in 2018, right? So some of them are things like a mobile site, right? You have to be a mobile optimized website, and there's ways to do that. You have to have an SSL certificate, which is the little green padlock, right? Sometimes you see that's an HTTPS, yeah. so that's called a, a site security. You, it needs to be a fast load time. And there's tests for that, right? Google Page Speed Test. Uh, also, render properly on different side screens, right? These are two different side yeah. sc 
upgrades right here. And you know, and then there's bigger iPads and there's smaller phones, and so you have to render around these different sizes. There's a thing called schema markup, which is code that you have to put on your site, and it tells Google what the page is about. So there's like this, which I'll talk about that later. User experience is becoming a big thing, and user intent. And this is being uh, indexed because of uh, Google has a thing called Rank Brain, which is an artificial intelligence bot that can determine what people are looking for and if it's serving up content that's relevant. <laughs> and user intent, user experience all ties into that. Uh, there's also a thing called bounce rates, you know, how fast people click off to a site, right? That, that actually Google tracks that. So, uh, and then uh, the other big thing is social signals. How much is your content liked and shared? You know, that's a that's a big ranking factor. Uh, backlinks and citations pointing to your website. Uh, how much time a, a visitor spends on a page. You can use a heat map heat map tool to see where they're going on your site. And then customer reviews are huge, right? People don't buy anything now without looking at reviews, right? So it's the, kind of the Amazon effect. So and Yelp also. So it's kind of a big deal to have a uh, ranking have reviews too. So this is all the stuff we we're talking about. But the three most important ranking factors to know is on-page optimization, off-page optimization, and violations and penalties. <laughs> so two things that are good and one thing that's bad. So that's why I did it in red with the little devil. So, <laughs> so on-page, off-page, and penalties, violations. So to get it down, so on-page success factors. So on-page uh, search ranking factors are those that are almost entirely within your control. Like what type of content do you publish? And are you providing important clues to help search engines and users determine your relevancy? And how does your site architecture help or hinder search engines? This is all about building a good website, re literally. So, which I'll get more, I'll, we're going to deep dive into this. So, <laughs> so uh, this is all on-page. Why is it important? Well, it's a way to beat your competitors or most are, are not doing it or they're doing it wrong. And it doesn't require external leak building or paid advertising. It's relatively easy and without it, you will not be targeting your customers searching for your product or service. You guys cool? How people read the web. So people scan websites. They don't really read a lot. They scan them and usually it's in this F pattern. And it's best to put the most important, relevant, keyword-focused content first, especially in the first 11 characters. This is why, like, web pages should start with a keyword. <laughs> People don't know this. 43% uh, of adults have lower liter literacy, so keep it short and simple. Brevity is rules. People like to read small chunks of text, too, like one-sentence paragraphs at a time. So, you know, this is the English, all the English you look, took in high school and you'd maybe even college, out the window when it comes to the online. Copywriting. Yeah, right. Web, web copywriting is a big deal. So use an inverted triangle with the most important news info first. Newspapers do, are very good at doing this because they, they, most people just read the first paragraph. So Page headings should also convey very useful information. You got a lot of nerve. I know, right? It's okay. It's just, it's needed, right? Just it's me. <laughs> Thank you. It's with anyone else. So what causes people to bounce, right? Anything that hides information your typical visitor is trying to find. Using nonsensical names, too many teasers, technical jargon, not quickly scannable or large blocks of text, bad UX design, user experience design, okay. ugly typography, and obnoxious color palette. See it all the time. So just say no to sidebars, distracting advertising, and just say no to pop ups. They're really annoying and people hate them. So they're still over all over the place, but crazy. But first things first titles and descriptions are the most important part of on page SEO. They should accurately describe each page to search engines and visitors because they're, they're displayed in browsers, search engine result pages, and external sites, right? They should be unique and accurately describe every page and should entice a visitor to click on your link. They should also include keywords at the beginning of the title. 50 to 60 characters for titles and 80 descriptions should have about 160, but they've now changed that. It's now 320. They actually doubled it, but shorter is actually better. Do you guys know what I'm talking about right here? 
Friday. All right, let me show you something. So let me just go to, I'm just going to go to Chrome here. So give me something you would search for. Snowboard. Snowboarding. I like it. So, so check it out. So this is, all right, so these are actually, so these are shopping results. These aren't necessarily, these are paid. See how it says sponsored right there? So these are paid technically. So this is not SEO, the people are paying that. Uh, this is another paid ad. But now we're getting into, uh, this is pure content right here, right? So this is coming from authority sites like oh, yeah. CBS Sports, NBC Olympics, and Fox <clears throat> News, right? These are typically, usually it's video too, but they're, they're calling it top stories. But also check it out. But then we're getting into some. So here's the first shop. So this company is doing it right, right? Because they're starting with a keyword. You notice that the first word. This is their page title is snowboards and snowboard gear, right? That's really. They're not starting it Evo, right? Because unless you're specifically searching for Evo snowboards, right? You're technically you're just going to do snowboard, like you said. So this company is actually doing it right. Eat this. You know that's actually perfect, and then that's the URL right, the right below it, and they are they are uh, they are uh, have an SSL certificate, see the little S, and then of course this is their uh, meta description, right? They've actually they've kind of crammed a lot of keywords in here, <laughs> but they've also noticed how it's bolding the word snowboard because that's what I did. So, right, but look at this. They're actually on two pages, so. Here's so here's and here's their uh, architecture, right? So www.evo.com slash shop slash snowboard. So that's their page. And if you notice here, they actually added another one, snowboards with a plural. Look at this, they're beating Burton. How crazy is that? Because Burton has Burton first. <clears throat> they should actually switch that. If Burton was smart, they would do snowboards and then Burton after that, right? Yeah. But is that local though? But Burton Evo? is a brand, so people probably search for that. So, especially in these days. Anyway, but, I mean, those those is, are good questions. Is that is that a, is is Evo possibly coming up first because it's a it's it's based on location currently or? No, it's coming up first because I mean we're searching for snowboards, right? So if I was to search for, let's just modify this. How about best snowboard? For powder, this would be really interesting. It's going to change everything. Ooh. So actually, look at Evo; it's really smart. So of course, that's a pay, that's a paid ad. But best. So this is an aggre This is a data aggregator right here. This is Transworld, right? So there's. This is a uh, reviews, right? Yeah. Best free ride snowboard. This is another. Looks like it's somebody's. It could be somebody's blog. There's Evo, yes. Yeah, somebody's done a really good job with that. <laughs> Someone they've they did their they've they've uh, let's just look at it. Oh yeah, no, this is great. Check it out. They done a really good job. So somebody's created their site and they've done a really good job. I've never even heard of them. <laughs> I've been snowboarding for twenty years. Yeah, <laughs> I've never heard of these I've guys. Never heard of <laughs> Clearly they're doing something right. So they, look them up. anyway, so so does that answer your guys' question about some of the things I said about meta page titles, yeah, meta yeah, descriptions, totally. HTTPS, right? Yeah. This is all important, right? Because people Google not just words, they're now Googling phrases, right? That's really important to understand too, yeah. right? Best snowboard, you know, and that's a modifier, that first word, best, right? We could also do top, right? Let's see what it changes. So we're still, we got another... Uh, Tested, it's still trans world. Evo's there. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> it's a good, good pick. It's yeah, these guys are doing a good job. Good example. I'll show you a ninja trick. So I have this thing called the. It's called the Moz Bar. This is kind of an SEO thing. This will tell me the URL, the page title, and the and the description. Look at this. Somebody did this exactly right. Remember, I said you want 160. They have exactly. They have 148. Can you guys see that? It's really really dark. That's someone's, really good. Someone's on their marketing. And then let's see if they have schema markup. They do not. So that's one thing they could do. They got to have schema markup. But they do have an open graph protocol. That's used for social sharing, like Facebook shares. So that's really important. So they have a redirect going to their, uh, uh, 
what you call it, uh, SSL <coughs> certificate. And it's a pretty fast page load time, right? 2.4 seconds, that's really good. Right, so this is... an add-on with Yeah, this is, uh, this is an extension for Chrome. It's a Chrome oh, okay. extension. Cool. But it's awesome. It's a little ninja trick. <laughs> yeah, it's sweet. Yeah. Moz, Moz bar. Anyway, so it only works on Chrome. Awesome. All right, so let's get back to this. So... Uh, so title, so you guys understand all the stuff. I'm not mm -hmm. going to re review. So, <laughs> so here's some good UX and UI rules. Again, it's user experience, user intent. So uh, use simple designs and templates. Remember to view your site on mobile and tablet. A home page should be a site summary and a place to set research in motion. And a user should be able to understand what your site is about is about in about five seconds. <clears throat> So like even if you don't, and there's some tools you can do, five second test or usability hub, uh, people who don't know what your site is about will bounce off. So graphical elements and images also help explain content. Make sure you optimize images with what's they're called alt tags. It's really important to optimize your images and uh, be consistent so visitors learn the site faster and have navigation elements like breadcrumbs so visitors know where they are. Hypertech links should always be blue. Notice I made mine in blue. And then uh, it should be underlined because that's the norm. <laughs> Some people try to get creative and do them in freaking yellow or whatever, and people don't know what it is. So, if, if, so this is kind of a best practice, right? So remember that people can enter your site from any page due to keywords and search results. So people think that people will always land on the home page. That's not necessarily true. Look at that Evo site, right? You could be entering from the powder board site page. You haven't even gone to the home page. You went to the powder board. Right, so it's really important to rank each individual page by keyword. Okay. So keyword research is everything. <laughs> so uh, there's a plethora of tools to perform keyword research. The best ones are Google Keyword Planner and AdWords, which is free. Great, yeah, great. Even Bing has a Bing Keyword Planner. Uh, there's some uh, paid ones like kwfinder.com, which I use. Uh, longtailpro.com it's really good uh, keywordtool.io I just learned about this new one yesterday seedkeywords.com uh, answerthepublic.com uber suggest suvi lsi graph and keywordshitter.com <laughs> so, just so you know you guys don't have to frantically write all this down I do have a link to my site where I have all these resources <laughs> so you don't have to so. Uh, Spyfu.com is a great way to discover competitors' keywords, and there's another one called SC, SEM Rush, and so you can actually look at your competitors and see if they're ranking for anything. And then Reddit has a keyword tool. I just found this out today. So a keyword keywordit.com is a keyword tool for Reddit. And then uh, there's the thing called SnippetOptimizer.net. It's a good tool, free tool to check your titles and meta descriptions. It actually can walk you through how to correctly set that up. Remember, it's that text that's kind of below, you know, the, the page title, right? So. so again, keyword search is everything. You want to brainstorm, you can brainstorm with colleagues. That's what, you know, if you were searching, what would you search for, right? IPAs, right? Whatever, porter, stouts, right? You yeah. could actually brainstorm. What, what are people searching for? Uh, you could use the keyword planner tool for search volume trends and other paid search tools, like that KW Finder will tell you what What's the short search volume in a location, which is really gold? It's a gold mine of information. So, uh, uh, titles and descriptions are the most important part of on-page SEO, and they should accurately describe the page to search engines and visitors. Right? They're also to get what's displayed in the SERP. I showed you that search engine result, and should entice a visitor to click. Right? Free is a really good word to use. Right? Free shipping. That's why you see that all the time. So uh, uh, keywords should be placed on the furthest most left in the first 50 to 60 characters. That's really important. More on keywords. One could use a Google search and just look at the suggestions. Actually, they, they auto-complete. If you notice when I was typing in, Snowboard is actually suggesting stuff. That's called Google Suggest. That's uh, something built into the, uh, the algorithm. And so you can actually stop and write those things down. Right, so it's kind of kind of fascinating that you can do that. So, uh, but also don't forget about Bing and Yahoo. They're actually relevant search engines. You might actually get some different keywords. So you can uh, really you can spend a lot of time uh, getting keywords and just write them down. 
uh, websites need to have every page keyword optimized <laughs> doing everything I told you and then uh, there's also what's called LSI keywords at the bottom uh, called latent, latent semantics indexes which I'll tell you about in a second but the best keyword research tool is your own brain <laughs> using your own trend analysis you need to understand your niche and where your customers are online as well Simply put, understanding your users' needs and providing an experience that best fits that intent. Right? So again, we're going after what they're looking for. You can do this by via your social media groups and asking what information your customers want and what are they and what do they need from you. Right, so here's some other Google tools that we like to use, like Google Analytics is really important to set up on your website so you can index the site. And you can actually specify the version of www or not. You can use a Yoast SEO plugin. This is for WordPress, by the way, to, for this and for Google Search Console. Uh, Google Search Trends takes keyword research to a new level, showing what terms are popular by region. This is great for local targeted search terms. And Google Search Console, used to be called Webmaster Tools, is critical to set up your site to allow you to know how Google sees your site. Once you set it up and submit the sitemap, it'll show crawl errors, how many links are pointing to your site, and your traffic sources. Have I lost you yet? <laughs> okay, good. Again, this is when you start getting into web development if you ever do that, right? This is really important. I'm trying to, I, I just got a domain. Okay. For on WordPress. Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out myself. It, it, sure, it's a nightmare. Yeah, it's super confusing. <laughs> It's going to take you two years. That's why, uh, <laughs> that's why I got in here. Actually, you're doing it right. Yeah. If you learn this first before you screw your site up, you won't have to redo it all. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, most people do it backwards. They build a site, I did it, and then yeah. didn't know SEO <laughs> yeah. because it affects your site architecture. Totally. So, write this <clears throat> down content length is getting longer, 2,400 word articles tend to rank higher. 300 word posts just don't cut it anymore, right? So 2,400 words, that's a lot of freaking words, right? So use main seed keyword at the beginning of your title and H1 with secondary or LSI keywords sprinkled throughout your content. Main keyword and at least one alt tag for your images and maybe a secondary LSI keyword and other alt tags. You guys know what that is? No. Yeah, when you start doing WordPress, right, when you, even other sites like, uh, even uh, Squarespace and Wix and Squirt, you know, uh, what's the other one? But anyway, when you upload a so uh, uh, image, there'll be a thing called the alt tag. It'll say image description and then an alt tag. And those are really important because of screen readers, right? And there's people who have visual impairments mm. and it'll describe what the image is. Mm. Well, Google picks up on that and it's a ranking factor. So any image you upload to your WordPress site you want to fill out the alt tag okay. because of that, because of uh, those two reasons, man. Really important. And you want to do that for at least one image on your website? For every image on your website, even your header image. Okay. <laughs> so on every image that you upload. You know. For example, you had a picture of your new porter, right? Yeah. So instead of just uploading the image, you would do, you would actually do an alt tag and it would say, this is a picture of our new porter. <laughs> and you can even put knee deep brewing or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be actually even better. Yeah. So, anyway, so uh, that way if people search for knee deep, it's going to come up. But if they search for porter, it's going to come up. Mm -hmm. cool. And you could even do, this is a picture of our new porter knee deep brewing Auburn. So if somebody did porter Auburn for whatever reason, that would come up. Right? Yeah. So, Auburn Brewery. Right. Yeah. Ooh, Auburn. better. So, so what's an LSI keyword? Well, it's a latent semantics indexing keyword. So LSI <clears throat> keywords are really just addressed at name for synonyms, right? Or related keywords. It's one of the Google ranking factors because to Google, it looks much more natural to, to use variations of your keywords as opposed to repeating the same keyword over and over and over again. It's becoming a bigger factor due to spoken <clears throat> search queries like Alexa, Cortana, Siri, etc. I, I just saw a commercial watching the Olympics about some car, I think it's Ford, now has Alexa built into the into the car, right? Yeah. So you think search <coughs> queries is big now? Just wait. So you know that's why LSIs are really important. 
Most important places use keywords in the title tag, right? In the URL, and here's a good example: yourdomain.com slash your keyword. <laughs> so for the URL, uh, header tags, right? So that's the H1, H2, H3. The alt image tags, again, I've already mentioned that. Even the captions, the image captions, would that's another thing you can do, and throughout your content, right? So it's preferable to target a topic sometimes rather than a precise keyword. This is because Google has gotten better at determining the topic of a page based on the entire context of the page. That's why it's important to find and use a variety of relevant words and phrases. Even more tips. <laughs> page titles should be around 75 characters. Meta description is around 150. This is actually changed now. And uh, Meta descriptions are not necessary and can actually hurt you. H1s can be a brand or a keyword or both. And it's also good to have LSI keywords in your H2s and H3s. And also, you want to use bold and italics too, because that's a uh, ranking <coughs> factor to Google. Uh, more content on the home page and site, ar site architecture is very important. And there's this website called seobook.com. It's a keyword density analyzer. Because believe it or not, it's a penalty if you have too many keywords, because Google considers that keyword stuffing. Mm. So there's a keyword density factor, actually. Schema markup. So schema is a result of collaboration between Google, Bing, Yandex, and Yahoo, and it's helped provide the information to their search engines need to understand what your content and provide the best search results possible at the time. Adding schema markup to your HTML improves the way your page displays in a SERP by enhancing the rich snippets that are displayed beneath the page title. I showed you what that looked like, right? So you guys know that's called a rich snippet, all that description of what it was. Meta. Yeah, right. It's also that. So uh, use uh, structured data to help Google understand <clears throat> the content of your site and enable special search result features for your pages. As users, devices, and contexts evolve beyond desktop in the world of mobile and everyday tasks, Google search is evolving by providing rich search results that support users beyond the desktop. Testing for schema markup. So you can Google, it's called a structured data testing tool, so you can check a URL if you start doing WordPress, you know, there's a, some plugins that now do it. JSON, LD, Schema Markup is a great little plugin. Uh, Microdata Generator is a plugin for Squarespace. So this, these are make it really easy to put Schema Markup and you don't need to know code. Right? Well, it's important to understand that. Do so, I flip for WordSpace? Do I have to know code? No. It's Schema Markup? Okay. Because I have to, I did get the functionality where I can get uh, yeah. plugins. Yeah. No, just get those plugins. The JSONLD is really good for uh, WordPress. Okay. Not the free version. You actually got to pay for the premium. Yeah, not, no, that's the one expensive. that I got. And that yeah, allows you to, to analyze. It'll put schema markup on your site for you. Oh, sweet. <laughs> it's going to ask you questions so you can you fill it out, but yeah. it takes about 10 minutes. It's amazing. So, anyway. uh, not using this will, will really limit what gets displayed on a mobile screen, by the way. So some site website builders like Wix and GoDaddy do not allow you to use schema markups, so don't use them. But some themes like the Genesis theme for WordPress has built-in schema markup. You don't even need a plugin. So there's some interesting things. <laughs> what, what does schema markup do again? I'm a little lost on that. <laughs> so what it does is it'll... Uh, see if I can't do it. It, it provides search engines information about what your site is about. It's code on the back end that tells Google what your site is about. Okay. Because Google, when you as a human being see a website with beautiful images and whatever, that's not what Google sees. Google just sees code. Data. data, basically. Raw code. And so schema kind of tells the, it breaks down what the code is to Google. It makes it understand your site better. And that, that helps Google rank it? And it's a ranking factor, absolutely. Everything I'm talking about is a ranking factor. So, huh? So it's real important to do it. Most people don't know what the hell it is. So. <laughs> Speaking of content, <laughs> it's everything, and that's due to the Panda update. That's why I put a little Panda on there. Uh, Google loves fresh, updated, relevant, long-form content. Sites and blogs that are not updated or posted often suffer. Google actually considers sites that don't have content to be abandoned. And they'll de-rank them. They'll delist them. De-index them. Uh, 
Think of it as like your favorite movie band or TV show. You only watch the good ones, right? You have to have good content to get people to come back. Luckily for you, most businesses suck at doing this. <laughs> so just by doing it better than most will help you. Copywriting. That's right. <laughs> Web copywriting is a big deal. So uh, anyway, so uh, you can hire people to write for you too. There's a service called Pitchbox. You can actually reach out to uh, people who, will, who can write for you. So you, if you don't have time for it. There's a whole, there's a whole sub thing. You said you're talking about copywriting. That's yeah. That's content that's SEO is too. becoming a thing because yeah. of the Panda update. So okay. content SEO, most businesses owners don't have time to write content. They're busy mm -hmm. trying to run their friggin' business. Yeah. But you know, you could sell a service as, you know, I will keyword research your main stuff and I will write content for you. And yeah. it's not gonna be three hundred yeah. words, it's gonna be fifteen hundred words and I'll post three times a week for you. That's so you can literally create a business for yourself. That's <laughs> literally why I'm here, is because that, that's the exact business I'm creating right now with my Perfect. website and all so this works out great. Call me because I can hire you. <laughs> awesome. Good stuff. So, one more thing. The final piece of SEO comes down to creating high quality content. Actually, I already said that. But technically, this means keeping your keyword density between 2 and 4% for each post and includes images and videos whenever possible. The last big technical tip is to encourage other sites to link back to your posts, which helps build domain authority. I got this from Forbes, right? So, this exact quote. So, now let's talk about off page success factors. Right, everything I talked to up now was on page, which you can control. So off page are those that you do not control, but in search engine use these because they learned early on that relying on only publisher controlled signals that didn't always yield the best results. <laughs> right? So for some some for instance, some publishers may try to make themselves seem more relevant than they actually are. So this is why off page is, is a thing, right? So First thing, for a business, it's important to be consistent with your NAPW, which stands for name, address, phone, and website. Right? It has to be exactly the same across all your off-page citations, right? Like is your address 123 Main ST or is it 123 Main Street, right? It has to be the same all the time across all the citations. Uh, maybe your area code changed in the past. Is your site indexed? Is it www or not? Right. That's what the W is in the NAPW. It's, the, it's you know, are you always going to put the www or not, or not? Right. So that you don't have to anymore. Right. Some people don't know that. So <laughs> inconsistent duplicate or even incorrect information causes ranking problems big time. So there's a great thing called La Ma's Local Citation Checker, which is really good. It'll tell you where your if your citations are screwy. So. Uh, you guys want to try it? Yeah. Give me a URL. What's the business name? What's the name? Um, Need you to Let's do that one. Sorry. I was going to give you my website, but it's, it's under maintenance still. So yeah, it's not, not going to work. So let's do. So here it is. So it's pulling up right there. So let's just see if they're, all their citations are correct. Oh, so check it out. So, so I want to show you something. So check this out. So there's some work that could be done here, right? So there's only 32% complete, right? So we're on Google, we're on Super Pages, we're on Factual, Yelp, and My MyYP. But look at where you're missing. You don't have a Facebook page, or it's incomplete. Foursquare, not on that. Info Group, Localese, <laughs> City Search, Insider Pages, Best of the Web, Hot Frog, right? And Axiom is a big one because that's where Google Maps pulls their data from. So that's, okay. a, that's a data aggregator. So look at this. So in, incomplete. So look at this. So you can you have duplicates here. So what's different about these two? Ah, look. So airport road S-T-E-H, but here it's sweet H. See that? So you need to pick one, <laughs> and you need to fill out the rest of these. So. Let's see where you're inconsistent. So it's kind of some different uh, tap room, co, co. And those are our different titles. Yes, <clears throat> your listings are inconsistent against four across four engines, right? This is actually hurting you. This is Yelp, Super Pages, YP. Let's see if you have any. You don't have any duplicates, so that's good. This is great. This is awesome. like the greatest tool ever. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. 
and you can buy this. I'm going to show you this. So improve with Moz Local. I'll just click on that. Improve with Moz Local for less than nine dollars a month. Think that's worth it? Yeah, I do. Oh yeah, it's like it's hundred bucks a, a year. It's less than that, so that's pretty <clears> good. And it'll automatically do all this for you. Yes. It'll update you across all these little listings. <laughs> this is why you're here, kids. So it's moz.com slash local slash search. And so this is called the local citation checker. So citations, by the way, are different from backlinks. Backlinks are things that point to your site. Citations are your business listing out there <laughs> in the matrix. Right? So that's really important. So local directory listings, this is similar to citations. So local directory listings are one of the most important ways you put yourself on the first page of a Google search quickly. You want to create optimized directory listings for your business on the most important directories on the web. It could be brew pubs, right? There, there's probably a directing listing for brew pubs across the freaking country, and you should be on that list, right? The best ones are Google My Business, Big Places for Business, Google Maps, Info Group, Local Star, New Star Local Ease, Axiom, Yelp, Factual, and Foursquare, right? All those were on that Yelp or that Moz had all of these, literally every single one of these. So you also need a lot of images, like 30 of your business for best SEO results, but you have to optimize them. In other words, the keyword, the title, and everything, right? It has to be optimized. Sometimes you even have to compress the image if it's too big because it causes slow, slows down the site. So Google My Business is really important. If you're not on that, I highly recommend you get on Google My Business. It's probably the most important off-page directory citation. It's a free tool designed for local businesses to use and enhance their online presence in Google. This includes the search results as well as allowing your business to be shown on Google Maps. That's why I'm number one, right? I've optimized my Google My Business page. So, benefits for customers. It allows customers to leave reviews, right? You can even send out an email to your customers. Hey, give me a review. That's a really good best practice. Uh, you can upload images. You can do your hours. You can find your location of maps to get directions, you get contact details and call you directly from their phones even, all they do is touch it. Uh, show, your, show your business details to your phone and visit your website. For you as a business owner, you get more control of what is shown about your business. This is really small. But, um, you can interact with customers, respond to reviews, post photos of you, your team, your office, your branding, and much more to show off your business and allows you to appear more reputable. And it improves your Google rankings. Opportunities appear to appear in the Google Map 3-pack at the top of the results. So you want to be, that's really expensive real estate to be in those in that Google Map, be, to be one of those three businesses. It's really important to be there for any business. Some directories are free, some not so much. It takes time to get your business listed across the hundreds, yes, hundreds of directories or you can take the easy route and pay for a service that will list it for you. <laughs> One of them, Moz Local is the best, value at $87 a year. Uh, BrightLocal.com and WhiteSpark.ca are other citation services. Yext is a deluxe service that offers other services like Reputation Modern for a premium monthly fee, and they bought Yahoo, but Yext is really expensive. So anyway. What is Google 3-Pack? It's the local pack that's the three businesses that show up in the maps area. This is a picture of a possum. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but it is. Yeah. So the possum update is how, what changed what gets shown in the local three pack. So everything on here has everything to do with that little possum. So there are great strategies to get to show up here. You have to have at least five, five star reviews to show up there. And you can use things like Plepper to get business to review you. And uh, Google has now added a home services boxes for some businesses uh, if they want to show up for certain industries. Like landscaping is now has a Google Home Services. It's a, another paid ad package, actually. So, I lost you yet. <laughs> so, this is off page optimization. <clears throat> Reviews are everything. If you do not have a review generation strategy, get one. <laughs> you encourage reviews and respond to them as a, is a ranking factor, especially negative reviews. Uh, more than 60% of all online decisions are made directly as a result of re review research. 
you need at least five five star reviews on Google My Business to show up in the Google Local Three Pack. I already said that. Bing pulls review da review data from Yelp, and that displays on their search page. So Yelp is really important too. So there's actually two you want to be on is Google My Business and Yelp, especially if you're a restaurant or food service. There's some great review tools. Some are some are paid and some are free. Like Grade.us is a paid one. Plepper.com is free. Whitespark is free. Uh, review Buzz is paid. Um, you can get a pre-populated five-star review I made during Plepper, but I'm not going to click on it because it doesn't work. <laughs> I had to change my site. So. <laughs> so backlinks. Let's talk about backlinks. You guys understand what a citation is, right? So. <clears throat> Typically, it's your name, address, phone number on a directory. Okay. <laughs> so think of them as digital yeah. yellow page ads like, out there. You can, you can manually get yourself on as many directories. Yes, yeah, just by using want. Moz. It's great. <clears throat> so just pay for that one thing. Yeah. Go to your boss and say, boss, pay me $500, and I'll get a setup across 100 directories. <laughs> See if that works. <laughs> yeah. Say if you just wanted to go on a few, you can go to those. How do you You could go to that Moz, that citation checker, yeah. and click on each one of those bars and do it yourself. Okay. And that's free. Yeah. If they're a free yeah. directory. If you, if you have the time to do it, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That's what SEO always, it's either time, and time is money. Yeah. So you can pay somebody to do it for you, or you can do it yourself. Yeah. So, Depends on the scale. <laughs> I did all mine myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, so backlinks 101. So backlinks play a critical role in search engine optimization. Google looks not only at the number of backlinks you have, but also at the sites they're from. So if a backlink, if a website of a thought leader includes a link to your site, then it will have a positive impact on your SEO. Backlinks from non-credible sites aren't worth anything and usually involve black hack tactics and can be a ranking penalty because of the pe penguin update. So, good times. <laughs> backlink building strategy. Start a backlink building plan with the guest blogging, press releases, asking for links, register for a WordCamp, put backlinks on websites you make and a footer. Right, that's one thing you can do. You can focus on quality, not quantity. You can use OpenSiteExplorer.com to see what links your competitors have and SEMrush and other SEO tools. SEOProfiler.com is great, but kind of pricey. You can even use Google Search Console dashboards and search traffic, then links to your site to see what's linking to you now. Um, there's some ninja trips. You can build links with coupons, deals, gift certificates, Yelp for business. Uh, Groupon, Local Saver. You can sponsor a meetup, which I do. You can join uh, the Better Business Bro and the Chamber of Commerce. I do all three of those things. So uh, backlinko.com is another great resource. This Brian Dean, this is his site. He is all about. He's Mr. Backlinks. He's made a whole career out of telling people how to get backlinks. In fact, as a business owner or a website owner, the one thing you should put in the back of your head is every day you want either a review or a backlink. <laughs> If you could keep that in the back of your head, I want reviews and backlinks every day. If you get one a day, just think that'll freaking explode, blow you up. So, a backlink or a review. So, <laughs> more on backlinks. You can start a backlink building plan like guest blogging, press releases, asking for links. Oh, this is the same thing. Did I already say this? I did. Mm -hmm. I got two on the same page. All right, so backlinks the white hot way. Reach out to influencers in your niche. Quid pro quo, Calaris. You can do guest posting. You can be on forums like Quora, Quora.com, or help a reporter out, Hero. Uh, skyscraper content is a, another ninja trick. You can do one long post about something and get people to add content. In other words, like you reach out to beer blogging sites and say, you know, what's the best IPA you've ever had? send me 300 words and I'll link back to your blog right and you can create a giant skyscraper content and that that would be a huge ninja trick for you yeah. so uh, you could do a scholarship program and then you know pay kids 500 bucks for writing the best essay and now you have content for your website <laughs> and the, the dot edu of the college will give you a backlink which is a really powerful backlink if it's a .edu or a .gov, right? Those are really good backlinks. So, or you even do, you can write a wiki article or on a trade magazine, right? You guys could publish something about how to brew the perfect IPA and submit it to brewerweekly.com or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, 
we can <clears throat> you can produce your own article and just send it to them and some places will publish that for yes there's also some uh, PR web and there's some other sites for PR which is safe time. then there's also paid backlinks you know typically a paid backlinks tend to be a black hat technique <laughs> and can result in a delisting Google penalty which would be really bad but there is some decent services like this Buzzstream and uh, VOU links and uh, the Hoth which is really expensive but really really good so there's you can pay for backlinks I don't know if I recommend this but it's out there best backlink tip ever web 2.0 properties carry more link juice so you can post to a social blogging platform like medium or tumblr or minds or wordpress.com not .org and use a blog feed plugin to your page and that's a great backlink strategy right because these are considered web 2.0 properties and they actually carry a lot of link juice so you could literally publish an article on beer on tumblr right yeah and then link back to your site it's kind of a big deal I'm just going to keep picking on you if you don't mind. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good beer. I understand. Right? So, our social signals. Google heavily favors sites that are have content clicked, liked, shared, subscribed. That's why your on page keyword research relevant content is important. Right? So, content's everything, I uh, Businesses need to be the most relevant social platform on their niche and target customer. A landscaper, for example, probably be better served on Facebook or Instagram and LinkedIn due to the demographics, right? A brewer might be better on Yelp or Foursquare. Video is huge because it can be shared across multiple platforms. It can be embedded on your site. You can upload it to YouTube, which Google owns YouTube, and is easily streamed on mobile, providing it's done right, which is worthy of its own class. So I do video marketing. It's a big deal. So. So let's talk about penalties. <laughs> so search engines and want people to perform SEO because it can help them prove their search results. And search engines provide help in the form of guidelines, blog posts, and videos to encourage specific SEO techniques. Some techniques that search engines deem spam or black hat could result in your pages receiving a rental penalty or worse, being banned from search engines entirely. Violations are generally tactics meant to deceive or manipulate a search engine's understanding of the site's true relevancy and authority. There used to be a thing called keyword stuffing. People would literally write keywords in white text and put it on a white background. And it was a little black hat technique to get a page to rank. And it worked actually for a long time until Google got, got wise. And now it's penalized, right? Because one of the panda, or no, it's probably the penguin update. So, you know, it's now they know how to do that. So. What is a Google penalty? Well, it's imposed when a site is partially or entirely removed from the Google index. Sometimes algorithmic changes can cause the site's ranking to drop. The Panda and Penguin updates were infamous for punishing rankings, like not being mobile friendly for one. That killed a lot of websites who were not mobile optimized. You can check this by going to Google uh, Search Console search traffic, manual actions, and see if, see if your site is safe, right? You can actually see if there's any penalties. You can also perform an incognito search to see if you're still showing up for your keyword slash city on page one, right? You can always do that. You could always do Brewer's Auburn and see if you guys even show up on the first page of Google, which you probably would because it's we're, Yeah, we're account. always like number one. Yeah, perfect. What was it, man? GWT search traffic manual action. Okay, thank you. Manual actions, yeah. Left my title. Negative actions by a robot overlords. <laughs> SEO penalties and bad stuff. So worst SEO practices. Some play the Google game to make money online with affiliate commissions and it eventually results in getting caught forcing you to start over. <laughs> And there's like a whole group, class of people who love to do black hack techniques and they brag about it too. So do not ever pay for backlinks from Fiverr in particular, even though they'll say, we'll put, give you 20,000 backlinks for $20. Bad idea. <laughs> so, uh, keyword stuffing doesn't work and keyword density is a big factor. Uh, excessive link skis, poor UX UI, artificial links, a hack site, thin content, pure spam, sneaky redirects, or black hat cloaking can all incur a penalty. 
Let's see what you guys have learned. So this is I just this just screenshot. So I did the Google search of kitchen remodel, right? Just want to see what come up. So I want it. So I want you to notice these are all sponsored, right? So this is a sponsor right there. So these are Google verified service systems. These people are paying to be here, right? So this is Google added this whole category. That's not AdWords. It's a whole other thing. It's called Google Verified Services. And it's only for certain things like remodelers and landscapers. There's a couple other deals. This is really new, by the way. So this is something that just changed. But notice it just has that one simple call to action. Call. Right? This is kind of a lead generation source. So that's why Google sells this. This is the Google Local Pack. So all I did, so this is just scrolling down. I took another screenshot. So these are the three businesses that showed up. Notice it's showing their images on the side. So cabinet doctors, guy big construction, cabinets to go. Those images are huge. Like people click on stuff. That's right. Yes, they are. And also notice these things up here. It says uh, within five miles, sort by distance, open now, top rated. So there's actually filters here that weren't there before. I personally always look at the stars too. Like Right? Yeah. Huge, like, huge deal. Yeah. Uh, and then this is further down on the screen. So these are related LSI keywords content pulled from authority sites, right? So these are all from HGTV, right? Every single one of these. And then HGTV, the whole site's coming up. And notice they didn't begin with HGTV. They did kitchen designs. Hello. Someone did this right. They, they, they went after a keyword. So let's go down more. So then it goes into Yelp. So this is that same query, right? I'm just scrolled down. I'm just taking screenshots. So these these are the Yelp listings, right? So this is some businesses are showing up here. This is just pulling data from Yelp. And then Kitchen Mart showing up number one, right? They actually started with their phone number. That's a ninja trick, too. Some people do that. Why does that help? Because, um, especially on mobile, it's clickable. You can just touch it and call. I don't know if I'd recommend putting it at the beginning. I'd put it probably at the end. So, uh, late LSI keywords are great for blog posts, right? So this is even further down the page. So it's related searches, right? Kitchen remodel idea pictures. Kitchen remodel before and after. How to remodel kitchen on a tight budget. Small kitchen. So these are great for blog posts. Or even images, right? Especially these before and after shots. I mean, give me a break. So you know you can really go crazy with the website if you know how to do this. <laughs> this is why you guys are here. <laughs> I live to rent. So Axiom is what Google Maps pulls from. So it provides a data foundation for everybody. So this is really important to do, and you can list your business, right? I don't know where, where's the link on there, but <clears throat> Google Resources. Yeah. That's a bit, it's a number. You can Google that too. List. List my business on <clears throat> So watch out for these. There's people trying to sell you this, right? Signup.com. Here we go. Listing manager. Here it is. So you can create an account and claim your business listing, right? So let's try knee deep, right? Your listing. All right, that's okay. That's don't panic. Do uh, Moz local, and you'll it'll populate this for you. But Axiom's really important. So anyway, 